Hey there guys, Tom here, welcome back to my movie channel and thank you very much for joining me for my review of Justice League The Snyder Cut or Zack Snyder's Justice League, whatever you want to call it. If you guys haven't been here before, hit that subscribe button, ring that notifications bell and leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of Zack Snyder's Justice League right down there. So, I'm going to talk about the, the movie but I am. this is not a spoilers review, I will not be talking about major spoilers for the movie in this video, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, don't worry, you are safe from all spoilers here. So before I get into my thoughts on the movie itself, I'm just going to give you guys a bit of context as to my feelings on Zack Snyder's DCEU installments overall. Man of Steel is a movie that I have grown to like over the years. When it first came out and I first saw it, I wasn't a big fan of that movie, but over time, the more I watch it, the more I actually really enjoy that film. And Batman vs Superman, I hated the first time I saw that theatrical cut. The Ultimate Edition does make that movie better, and I enjoy it a bit more, but I still don't think I like that movie. I'm not at that point yet, although there is some very good stuff in it. So when the 2017 theatrical release of Justice League came out, obviously I knew that movie wasn't what Zack Snyder had originally intended it to be. Obviously I knew that they had brought in Joss Whedon, they reshot a good 75% of it or whatever the figure was, and that, you know, it was significantly different from what it was supposed to originally be. And I did like the 2017 version for what it was at the time, not thinking I would ever, ever see Zack Snyder's original vision for Justice League. So I I watch I, I I go to turn on Snyder's Justice League last night, and I get about twenty minutes into the movie, not even maybe fifteen minutes into the movie, and I started to find myself I start I found myself starting to get very angry, and I wasn't angry at the movie I was watching. I was getting angry at the 2017 version. And I was getting angry at the 2017 version because I, because 20 minutes into Zack Snyder's Justice League, I'm thinking, I'm already 20 minutes in and this is already far better than the entirety of the 2017 movie. And all the quotes we had heard coming out of Warner Brothers and all the reports had said that, you know, Ju Warner Brothers wanted to change Justice League and brought in Joss Whedon because they weren't happy with the direction that Zack Snyder's movie was going and they wanted to drastically change it. But when you sit down and you watch Zack Snyder's Justice League in its entirety, and you also watch the theatrical version, you realize, essentially, it is the same movie, there's just more of it. And when I say the same movie, I mean the core essential story beats of Zack Snyder's Justice League and the theatrical cut are the same. Batman assembling the Justice League, Steppenwolf searching for the mother boxes, the Justice League trying to bring Superman back to life, you know, Bruce Wayne buying the bank to save the Kent farm. And it made me wonder, why the hell did they spend an extra $100 million, do all these reshoots, fuck up Henry Cavill's face, bring in Joss Whedon, give him no extra time to do it, to essentially make a movie with the same basic story of Zack Snyder's? I, I just, I don't understand. If you wanted to drastically change it, then change it. But start fresh. I, I don't understand it. Just watching Zack Snyder's Justice League, I couldn't help but really resent the 2017 version even more because look I fucking love Zack Snyder's Justice League I I loved almost every minute of this movie I absolutely fucking love this movie without exaggeration I I will not apologize for that Zack Snyder's Justice League is in every way not almost every way in every way superior the main reason is that you know yes it's a four hour runtime but this movie, you the characters have a chance to develop. They have a chance to become fully realized characters. You know, in the 2017 version, Cyborg was basically an afterthought. Cyborg was a, another, just another side character in the movie. You know, he wasn't... But in, in Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zack Snyder has said multiple times, Cyborg is the heart and soul of this movie. And he really is. Zack delivered on that promise. And also, this movie really gives Ray Fisher a chance to show off just how good of an actor Ray Fisher is. And he's an incredibly uh, traumatized character. And he has a fully realized arc in this movie. All the characters do. All the characters have significant arcs in this movie. And I really don't want to make this video a comparison between the two Justice League movies, but when you watch Zack Snyder's Justice League and you see all this interesting, uh, deep, meaningful backstory for the character of Cyborg, why they chose to cut that out completely out of the 2017 version, I have no idea. Uh, it would have 
improved that movie quite a bit. And it just seemed, in retrospect, kind of spiteful that they just decided, oh, we'll just, we don't need that. Cut it out. Don't need pivotal character development. Cut it out. I, I don't, I don't get it. The other big improvement to me was Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf in the 2017 version was just a poorly animated, generic bad guy who stood there and said, Mother! Unity! That's all he ever said in that movie. And in this version, he's again a fully realized character. He's one spiky motherfucker and he's big, bulky, threatening, but he has motivation. He has his own arc. And again, it just, it improves the movie. Even Steppenwolf has a chance in this movie to, the character has a chance to breathe. He has a backstory that you get a lot of, especially with with Darkseid being in the movie and whatnot. And he's not just there for the, for the heroes to beat up on. You know, yes, Superman smacks him around and makes him his little bitch, but it's Superman. But Steppenwolf is a character in this movie that I really liked. He's a really compelling villain, in my opinion. And the heart and the humor and the, the interaction between all the characters, the members of the League, members of the League and Steppenwolf, Steppenwolf and Darkseid, Steppenwolf and Dasad as well. Like, it all just works so well. Now, I'm going to talk about the runtime here a little bit here. Yes, the movie is four hours long. Did the movie need to be four hours long? No, not really. Um, the film didn't need to be four hours long. That being said, the runtime of this movie did not bother me at all. This movie flew by for me. I've seen two hour movies. Hell, I've seen 90 minute movies that felt like I was sitting there for five hours because they were so boring. Listen, the the pacing of this movie is a little weird. Uh, it, it is a little weird. And the movie does slow right down and then it's, you know, speeds right back up again. And it, and it sort of goes back and forth. But the movie has like a certain rhythm to it. And if you get hip to the rhythm, if you get into the rhythm of the movie, I feel like the movie will work for you. But if if, if, if it's not working for you, if the pacing doesn't work for you, I, I don't feel like you're going to get much enjoyment out of it. That being said, the four hour runtime, you can cut stuff out. There are scenes in this movie that could be lifted out of the film and they wouldn't make the film necessarily better. But, you know, you could shorten up the movie if that was your goal, and it also wouldn't make the movie any worse. So, for example, there's a scene in the trailer where Barry Allen saves Iris West from that car accident. Now, that's a scene that, give, you know, pads out Barry's backstory in this movie, but it doesn't really add anything significant to his character. It just gives us another beat for his character. So you could lift it out the movie and you'd be fine. Look, I could sit here and nitpick this movie and find everything wrong with it and tell you all of the issues that this movie has, because this movie does have some issues. But with this movie in particular, what would be the point? What would be the point in sitting here and criti and really, you know, critiquing this movie and saying, well, this was wrong and that was wrong and this wasn't color corrected correctly and whatever it may be, you know, Justice League in general, the 2017 version and this version, you know, the whole Justice League drama, there's so much negativity online and I don't really want to add any more to that conversation. I feel like this movie is all tourist filmmaker, filmmaking at its finest. You have a filmmaker in Zack Snyder who had a vision, he knew what he wanted to make, he knew what story he wanted to tell, and he went and told that story. And yes, it's batshit crazy, and it's it's quite a deep cut movie. You know, who the hell of the general movie public, general movie going audience? You know, mum and dad, grandparents sitting at home going, "What's this Justice League?" And they hit play, and they're hearing about the anti life equation. Going, I, you know, as I'm hardcore comic book fans, no one knows what the anti life equation is. But I gotta, I gotta say this. It is fucking great. It is so great. I love the story behind getting this movie made. I love it because it really is, it, it's a one in a lifetime thing to happen. It's never happened before in movie history. Fans mounted a campaign on Twitter because they saw a version of a movie they didn't like, knowing that there was another version sitting in the vaults of Warner Brothers. Got on Twitter for three years and just kept tweeting this, release the Snyder Cut. Hired billboards, had planes fly over the studio that said, release the Snyder Cut. Until finally, they put enough pressure on Warner Brothers to put up 70 to to $100 million. They got a major motion picture studio 
to put up a hundred million dollars to finish the Snyder Cut. It's amazing. It is. It is absolutely mind blowing that this happened. But I do want to caution people because I don't want people to get into a false sense of security that now anytime they see a movie they don't like, that they can go and campaign on Twitter and you know throw a hashtag out there and get any studio to make anything they want. It, pump the brakes on that. You know, look, would I be happy? to see another Zack Snyder Justice League movie, you're damn right, because this movie ends on pretty much a cliffhanger. Give me the next installment, please. Now, whether that's in comic book form, animated form, live action, I don't care. I want to see the continuation of this Justice League story. But let's be honest, they're not going to restore the Snyderverse. Uh, Zack Snyder has said it. Warner Brothers have said it. I'm okay. I've seen the Snyder Cut. I'm good now. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed the Snyder Cut. I loved it a great deal. It's now my favorite movie that I've seen in 2021. It is absolutely my favorite movie of the year so far, and it probably won't hold that position for much longer because we've got a lot more bigger movies coming out later on the, in, in the year. But for right now, the Zack Snyder Justice League is my favorite movie this year. This movie is, is fucking insane. And there are scenes in this movie that are the same scenes as the 2017 version. You know, because obviously Whedon and Warner Brothers did use some scenes from this movie in the 2017 version. There are scenes in that in both versions that are the same scenes, essentially, with very minor differences. A couple of lines of dialogue are different. The color palette's all obviously a little different. But the Zack Snyder Justice League is a different experience. So while you're watching a scene that you've seen before in 2017, it's a completely different experience. And it doesn't and and you know that you're watching the same scene as, as, as you've seen previously. But it feels like it's completely brand new because in the context of a different movie, of the movie that it was actually made to be in, not in a hodgepodge mishmash of corporate greed, you know, in a true filmmaker's vision of a movie in Zack Snyder's Justice League, it works. So that is my entire thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League. I had a great time. I loved almost every second of it. This movie was a was really fucking great and I cannot wait to watch it again. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League, and I am sure you do because that's what the internet does, <laughs> leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's continue to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League because I'm as giddy as a schoolgirl. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. My name is Tom. Remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell so you never miss out on my take on all things movies. And I will see you guys next time.